What to photograph in December 2022? Hello, Photopillar Rafael the Bar here. December, we're getting to the end of the year, and there are still lots and lots of cool events to photograph. The full moon, Mars at opposition, it's where Mars is brighter than any other time of the year, and it's visible throughout the night. The Geminids meet to shower, and we have the Comet 81P slash wild at perihelion making its appearance throughout the night. Mercury at its greatest eastern elongation, which is one of the best times to view and photograph the planet. The Earth's its meteor shower, five conjunctions of the Moon with the planets, with Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, Saturn and Jupiter again. The Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. And of course, we also have the Milky Way. Oh, and as always, uh, don't forget the always on four opportunities. Talking about the golden hour, blue hour, sunrise, sunset shots, star trails. Also, as always, at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you three of the best photos that you've submitted to the Photo Pills Awards and that we featured in November. So, these are what you want to photograph, let your imagination fly, and use photo pills to plan your shot so you know where to go and when to capture it. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started with some of the best four opportunities that can be photographed in December 2022. Let's go! The last full moon of the year is on December 8th, giving us one more chance to photograph it, align it with a subject we like. So, based on the moonrise and moonset directions, plan your shot. For instance, let's have a look at the plan here. If on December 8th, 2022, at 5.36 p.m., I am at the red pin position, this is my plan, red pin position is my shooting spot, the moon will be aligned at the top of the Favari lighthouse. Moon rises at uh, 5.21 p.m., according to the top panel. The shot is around 5.36 p.m., according to the time bar. And if I check the height of the moon, the moon height is 31. 6 meters according to the top panel. The lighthouse is about uh, 28 meters, so it's a pretty cool alignment. And the size of the moon is 10 meters. The diameter, the apparent diameter of the moon is 10 meters. And this diameter is represented on the map with this thicker uh, area that you see on the lighthouse. Also, this shot occurs, if I go to panel number 3, and the sun is at minus 3.96 degrees of elevation and this is at the end of the golden hour which means that the moon will be yellow and beautiful super nice shot it is indeed a beautiful beautiful moon shot something similar to the photo you see now by Antoni Claveta the photographer of photo pills he got the shot during the blue hour a planning shot for the end of the golden hour the moon won't be that pinky but very beautiful and yellow. Great, if you're wondering how I plan this shot, well, there is a cool video you can watch here where you can learn how to plan your long distance shots with the moon, where you can get big moons with subjects. On December the 8th, we also have Mars at opposition, meaning that it is at its closest approach to Earth and that its visible phase will be completely illuminated by the Sun at a magnitude of minus 1.87. Mars is brighter than any other time of the year and is visible throughout the night. This is the best time to observe and photograph Mars with a telescope. But that's not all, because on December 8th, Mars will be in conjunction with the Moon. The planet will rise in the east along with the Moon, and you'll find it in the direction of the thin blue line you see moving on the map. This line is showing me where the Moon is at all time, and next to the Moon, you'll see Mars. The planet will be very close to the full Moon. The Gemini's Mito Show is peaking on the night that goes from December 14th to December 15th. Around 66 meteors per hour are expected at the peak. Take advantage of the hours the moon will be below the horizon to photograph the Geminids. Because when the moon rises with a phase of 64%, the light of the moon will wash out many, many meteors. The radiant of the meteor shower is due east. The radium is the radium point where uh, meteors appear to originate. And then as I change the time here on the time bar, you see the radium moving along this gray path on the map. The radiant 
is in the direction of this gray line that you see moving next to the blue line on the map. There you'll find the radiant. And if you want to see it on the 90R, just tap on the 90R here and look for the radiant of the Geminis. Here we have it. There is the radiant and the moon. So make sure to photograph the meteor shower before the moon rises above the horizon. And one last thing, the Gemini's meteor shower is visible from both hemispheres, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And if you to learn how to plan your meteor shower shots, the Gemini's meteor shower, just watch this video. On December 15th, the comet 81P slash wild will be at perihelion. This is when the comet is closest to the sun. It's when it reaches a maximum level of brightness, releasing large amounts of gas and dust. Unfortunately, the comet, with an expected magnitude of 10.5, won't be visible to the naked eye. You remember that only celestial bodies with magnitudes below 6 are visible at the naked eye. So the comet it won't be visible. I have to use a tracker and a telescope to view it and to photograph it. On December 21st, Mercury will be at its greatest eastern elongation, which means that the planet will further away from the Sun, giving us great conditions to view it and photograph it from both hemispheres. Mercury will shine in the early evening the sky with a magnitude of o minus of minus 0.41, which means that Mercury will be visible to the naked eye. After sunset, you'll find it low in the sky, next very near to the direction of the sunset. Sunset direction is the, this thick orange line you see on the map. The Earth's its meteor shower is peaking on the night that goes from December 22 to December 23. Around 6 meteors per hour are expected at the peak. And the good news is that the Earth's are peaking around new moon, so no moon is expected at the peak. And again, the radiant point of a meteor shower is that spot in the sky where the meteors appear to originate. And it's represented on the map by this gray line you see moving on the map here, uh, north. And if you tap on the 90R, you'll find the Earth's radiant. I have my uh, wardrobe opened for the echo thing, so yeah, this is the radiant point. Use the night uh, AR view to visualize where the radiant is at all time. It's super, super useful. And one last thing about the Earth, it's very important. It's only visible from the northern hemisphere. In December, there will be five moon planet conjunctions. Very cool. On December 8th, Jupiter will be close to a very large moon uh, next to the full moon. On December 24th, the Moon will be in conjunction with Venus and Mercury, and the Moon phase will be very, very thin, only 2%. A very nice shot. On December 26, Saturn will be pretty close to the Moon, with a phase of 15%. And on December 29th, Jupiter will be again in conjunction with the Moon, and the Moon will have a phase of 43%. On both hemispheres, you'll find the conjunctions after sunset. To spot them after sunset, look in the direction of the Moon. And the direction of the moon is pointed out by this thin blue line that's moving on the map. Find the moon and you'll find the planets. In December, we get to enjoy the thin part of the Milky Way in both hemispheres, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. For example, in the northern hemisphere, I have the repeat in Favaric in Menorca, it's a great time to photograph a panorama of the winter Milky Way. And if I tap on the night AR, you'll see how low in the sky is the Milky Way and how thin it is. It's very nice. Here you have the horizon and this is the arch of the Milky Way. Of course, the Milky Way core is below the horizon here. Cool. If we go now to the southern hemisphere here in Cape Cross in Namibia, you see that you can photograph the Milky Way when it's low in the sky, nice for a panorama, but also when it's completely vertical. Always in the southern hemisphere, you have a few more options in terms of composition. And again, tap on the 90R and let's find the Milky Way. Here we have it, super vertical above my head. 
horizon and the Milky Way is right here. Nice. Oh, by the way, you want to learn how to plan your Milky Way shots? Watch this video. Now it's time to see some of the best photos that you submitted to the Photopills Awards and that we featured in November at the time of recording this video. The first one is a fantastic photo of the Milky Way completely vertical in El Hierro, Canary Islands, Spain. Photo by Victor Bolea. The second one is a composite of multiple phases of the November 8th total lunar eclipse over the Verrazano Bridge in New York, photo taken by the great Honora Bowman. And the third one is a photo where we can see the phases of the October 25th, 2022 partial solar eclipse next to Taj Mahal in India, photo taken by Sandeep Mathur. Congratulations, great photos! Now you wish to learn how to plan and photograph all the events I've shared in this video, I invite you to download our super detailed photography guides. The guides are amazing, check them out. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download them. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, and remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.